Well, Bobby, there's not many games left here at the famous old stadium. I know for, for a lot of the former players, it's going to be a very emotional night when we play Manchester United next month. What do you think it's going to be like for you? Um, it was a, a home that I came to uh, too late for my, of my choosing. I actually came at 28 years of age. Um, I was led to believe that um, Ron Green was interested in me at uh, 21 and I have no doubt in saying that having been coached by uh, John Lyle and Ron Greenwood, uh, if I'd have come here at 21, I would have played for England. The coaching, um, the education, the understanding of football, triangles, one-touch football, uh, it was just phenomenal. And uh, it's taken me through my football life, the, the, my beliefs of how football should pl be played, and uh, that's what West Ham United taught me. Now, I know you didn't get on that day back at, <laughs> back at Wembley in 75, but you were part of that famous team yeah. that lifted the cup. Yeah. against Bobby Morse Fulham. That's right. Yeah, it's just it's funny you should say that. I've just been talking to Bonzo and uh, he, he said, Gordy says you you enjoyed that day better than anybody else. But what he didn't realise was like it's, it's ten minutes ago with two nil up, I have a bat of a coughing bout and I to all, uh, to all the attention to John Lyle and Ron Greenwood to turn around and say, Can I go on? But they never turned around and unfortunately, you know, I never got in the field of play. So it, it was disappointing from that fact. But once a whistle went, I thought, that's, that's it. I, I'm, I am really, really going to enjoy this. And I did. And do you still remember the celebrations after the game? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, on the way around with Sparrow, you know. We've all got nicknames, you know, like Alan Taylor with Sparrow because his, his legs are th so thin, you know. We've got Boogaloo, a, a room with Boogaloo when we used to go on the tours and everything. And so it's, it, it's, it was a lovely, homely club and uh, I, I enjoyed it. I had a fantastic two and a half, three years here. I've got the shirt as well, do you want to see it? Absolutely, we'd love to see it, okay. Bobby, we'd love to see but, it. <laughs> this hasn't got sweat stains on, it's got champagne stains on, all right? So, so there we are. Let's hold it up. Yeah, that's, Let's hold it up to the camera. That's, uh, that's where we are. But I had, I had that, that was the number I had. And I, I'm, I'm looking around this afternoon to see if I can find Patsy Holland to see if he's got the number 11 shirt. <laughs> see if he wants to do a part exchange with me. Billy Bonds and, and Sir Trevor Brooking. Just, just tell us about, about the two individuals and, and your memories of them throughout your career in football. Um, Bonzo was one of the greatest trainers I've ever seen. Um, I went to 13 football clubs and he was just from a run. Oh, he, he just loved running, you know. And we've been all over the forest, all over around here. and it, Anything running was, it, it was just unbelievable. Great, great box to box to box player. And he's a great skipper, great leader. Um, we, we often, we, we, it's lovely now to, to be able to come back and smile and laugh and, and, and enjoy that time. I was only here for two and a half, three years, but it was a very a precious time in my life. Boogaloo, um, well, we actually uh, roomed together, so we shared rooms and we went to Russia. Uh, we got into our room in Russia and he pulled his bed, bed, uh, his bed clothes back. There was a nest of uh, cockroaches in there. Uh, <laughs> We put that there, Bobby. No, I don't. No, no, no. We, and we, we went out to see the young lady that was looking after the floor and we explained the situation of the cockroaches. Not only that, and the, the cockroaches, we, we didn't have a, a plug for the tap. So she came along and got some toilet paper, soaked it and put it in the plug hole. So, you know, everybody says, you, you lads, do you want to go to Europe? No, we don't want to go to Europe. We were suffering while we were out there. And Trevor had food poisoning as well, so he didn't play in Aravac whatsoever. But... Uh, we, 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 we had happy times, um, but um, Trevor Brooking was one of the best one-touch players I, I ever played with. And I've always often said that if you can play one-touch, you can play anywhere in the world. And, uh, and Boogaloo, uh, uh, we, we, we were in a situation, we, we were a bit compacted. Uh, we had discussions and everything. And um, he, we actually had a race in Norway and uh, over 100 yards and Trevor Brooking beat me. <laughs> I'm not sure what the odds were at the time, but... Uh, yeah, we had a great time and a great, you, great pleasure. You've had a great career, Bobby, in football, managing it and playing, but to see those, both of those individuals you're talking about and the loyalty they showed to West Ham, does that say something about them as a character as well? Oh, of course it does. Look, they come back now, they're smiling. They bring, it's not only that, you know, Bonzo's got his grandchildren here, Trevor's, Trevor brings his grandchildren as well. That, how many generations is that? It's, it, it's wonderful. And, and that was the nucleus of this, what this club was, West Ham United. And, uh, you know, down to, to two other people as well.
Ron, Ron Greenwood and John Lyle. And it's, it's lovely to come here because there's, there is a, an atmosphere and there's a feeling uh, if they can get into Europe, they're going to fill the stadium over there how many times over. So they've got to move and uh, uh, it'll be a great move for everybody, but we will miss Upton Park.